Welcome to Business Payload Analyzer. Today, I will show you how we enable custom transaction naming. Today's digital businesses know that user experience is a priority. 99% of all companies expect business benefits from improved user experience. But gaining the right metrics can be challenging. 53% state their tools do not provide the user metrics they require. Many struggle to track the user flow of business transactions. And many struggle to prioritize the problems based on the impact of the customers and the business to the bottom line. Today's methods for collecting user experience present many challenges. Traditional tools use network taps to collect information. Those network taps are unable to operate with cloud applications and may have encryption issues as encryption schemes change and evolve over time. Many applications require specific development code which passes context information to the monitoring solution, as well as the monitoring solution may require manual match-based definitions which can be expensive and hard to maintain over time. Why do we need BT naming in modern applications? As I mentioned on the previous slide, developers are modifying applications and complex definitions are being defined and maintained in monitoring tools for a reason. It's because we need to have some sort of context to an application transaction. The challenge becomes that many applications share URLs between different functions. While the function might be simply add an account or remove an account, they may be under a common URL called account actions. Without the context, or without a developer going out and tagging that transaction, we might not understand exactly what the user is doing and be able to report and prioritize on it correctly. Business Payload Analyzer solves that problem. It allows us to not involve the developers in creating special tags in order for us to pull information such as the business transaction name or context out of the function. It allows us to look inside the payload that is being passed between the client and the back end or between two backends, and extract out the information that would normally be part of developer-created tags. It does this dynamically through a discovery process in data science. We also have a point-and-click interface where we can simply define any numeric value as a business KPI. The goal being with Business Payload Analyzer to remove all the challenges that we saw earlier in this presentation. Business Payload Analyzer does not use span ports. It is cloud-friendly and safe, it does not require complex definitions, and the developer does not need to modify the application. As we have mentioned, custom transaction naming, which in the case of Business Payload Analyzer is done automatically by pulling information out of the payload, provides you the ability to map business context to the application transactions. You can see user session details and back-end app performance diagnostics as it maps to the business functions. And you can see end-to-end -end correlation in the application topology and in the transaction trace by this business transaction name. Now let's look at a demonstration of how Business Payload Analyzer, or BPA, creates custom transaction naming from the application payload. First, we are going to choose the DX Application Performance Management capability so that we can configure the Business Payload Analyzer, or BPA, as it is commonly called. On the left menu here, we choose Business Payload Analyzer under App Config. We can choose the applications currently sending data to BPA. Here I have chosen JTickChange Web. Now before we jump in and take a look at the data that JTickChange Web is providing us, let's get familiar with that application. JTickChange Web, or TickChange as we commonly call it, is a typical e-commerce application for the web. We can go out and browse items add them to our shopping cart, and make a purchase. What I'm going to do here is take a look at some items and place them in my cart. Now notice the URL on top of the browser. It's not the most human readable name with some product ID code. In many applications, the URLs or page names are not understandable to the non-technical person or would aggregate multiple functions together. Notice how the page title and the header to this table are understandable. As I navigate through the application, you will see this is the case that there is something on the screen which means it's in the payload which can be used or combined with something else to create a human readable name for this page or business transaction. Let's take a look at other items in the application and see if this is consistent. 
What we have noticed in many applications, over 80% use some consistent way of naming the business transaction so that the end user understands what they are doing. Let's also start adding some items to our shopping cart. Let's proceed to check out. This will require me to log into the application. Now don't worry, we can protect the password or private data from being examined by BPA or even have it masked or encrypted before we examine it. You'll notice this page is also consistent with the item pages in that the page title and header describe its function. Let's continue checking out. As a reminder, private fields like this credit card number can be masked or encrypted from the solution. Here we have a summary of our order, and then we can log out of the system. Now let's jump back to AIOps APM capability to see what information BPA collected from our business transactions. Here we can see the discovered data and rules for JTIC Change Web. Some of the rules were generated by the system, and as an administrator, I have the option to override or change them. Here you can see I have modified the name of the application to Tick Change 1.7, a much more human readable name than JTIC Change Web. By default, the system looks at all the URLs or pages in the application. We have enabled application discovery so that it will run every 30 minutes till it has a sample set of 3,000 events. Discovery is used by the system to analyze the frequency of a field's occurrence in the application and the frequency of the values for that field, which help determine which information to keep, throw away, and suggest as potential business transaction names. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can now see all the fields discovered in the application which are determined to be discarded or thrown away. We can look at some examples for values for that field and determine if we want to capture it for all transactions where it occurs. Let's scroll up to the captured attributes or fields. These are the fields that we've determined or the system has determined we should keep and store every time they occur on a page or in the payload. These fields are also included in all transaction traces and can be turned into attributes for use in the APM topology map as well as KPIs to be trended by the APM solution. Sometimes you actually need to go out and format a field so that you don't capture the entire value but subvalues. BPA provides very simple, easy ways to do this where you can use a point and click interface or you can use regular expressions. We can also search for a field which we might know by the field name or more importantly the field value. Here we have looked up the credit card field name because we know a value visa. We are also choosing to rename this field so it has a more understandable name when we are looking at it in a transaction trace or a business KPI. We can also take any captured field and promote it to be part of our rules for naming the business transaction. This can also happen automatically using the scoring system if you enable auto promotion. Scrolling back to the top to the identifying fields or attributes is where I can manipulate how the system generates those human readable names for the business transaction or page. These are also the default aggregation points for data and APM. Here I can choose how the system builds the names modifies the way the field is captured, just like I did with the captured field, but it can also create a compound rule to combine one or more fields, if they exist, into a rule to create that business transaction name. Here you can see we have taken the page title as the default name for the business transactions. This generally covers about 80% or more of all use cases. Though you do typically have to filter out extra data from some fields using word capture, since many applications may do something like, welcome Bob Smith for its homepage, and we want to simply call that page welcome. Here is an example where I've created a sub rule where I've used more than one field for the naming convention. I can drag to change the order of preference for the fields in case one or more exists on a single page. 
Now finally, let's just go over where we can do things like change our alias. For example, here we can change the name of the application. We can change how often Discovery runs and how many events it uses for its sample set. Very busy applications may not require many samples, depending on how variant they are within their own pages. We can also go out and define subcomponents to an application or subrule sets for capture. And we can set our privacy rules. Here we've gone out and we can go add a rule, either by field name or field pattern. Let's create one here for a custom numeric field. And then let's go out and mark this field so that we only see the last few characters of it. Here we can download the components which are placed on the server, such as the BT listener and the plugin. If we want to refresh the screen, we can click this button or click this button here to apply our changes and send them out to the plugins and the listeners. Now let's go back to APM and see what our data looks like. If we go to an experience card for our application, we can see that we have business transaction names that are human readable. While I have one URL here, this was done intentionally to show a difference. Here are the examples of application business transactions which are taken directly from the payload, in this case, from the title. If we'd like to look at the raw metrics for the business transactions, we can simply go to the Metric View, Experience Collector, Business Segment. Here we can see our application and all the business transactions that have been captured. If we open one up, we can see the metrics that BPA captures for the performance of that business transaction from the web server perspective where the plugin is installed. Simply clicking on the business transaction gives us an overview of all the metrics that are collected. And if we look at transaction traces, we can see all the captured attributes inside of the transaction trace for the named business transaction. Here's the URL. And here are the captured fields from that actual transaction. Remember, this is not every field in the application payload, but only those promoted to capture. These fields are also available in AIOps DX dashboarding for custom reporting. If we move to the application map and we open the client and user attributes, we can see the browser agent calls, which are URLs, and we can see how they connect into the BPA transactions. Here's a shared URL, and look at all the different business transactions or contextual functions that it is performing. Here you can clearly see the response time for the overall browser agent call by URL, and then the sub-business transactions that BPA has detected and is reporting from the web server perspective. Thank you.